Hello everyone, Storm11 here. Today we'll be talking about this disturbance that they'll be going through parts of Mexico, going to the southwestern part of the Gulf of Mexico, that could bring a lot of rain across parts of southeastern Texas and southern Louisiana. So we're going to get started with the Nash Hurricane Center outlook here. And we got Hurricane Larry, that's been a thing over the last, I think, week or so. And this is going to be affecting the new Foundland of Canada that could bring hurricane force winds and also some heavy rainfall. Even after the system here, it would be affecting Greenland. It would be a subtropical storm at that point, but it would be bringing in a lot of snow for parts of southern Greenland. We're talking about snowfall amounts that could be anywhere from 1 to 3 feet of snow. Crazy to think about how a system like Larry goes from a Category 4 hurricane to a blizzard. Crazy to think about, right? We also got another disturbance here out in the main development region that also has a high chance of development as well. It's got 50% in the next 48 hours and 70% in the next 5 days. Currently has no threat to the United States. However, these islands right here may get some impacts out of the system here. But the main threat would be heavy rainfall. But, that's ex but we do expect this to become at least a tropical depression here over the next couple of days. Then we got this system right here that will be going through parts of Mexico. It's got a 70% chance in the next 5 days. 48 hours is a 40% chance at this time here. And this is going to be slowly moving, kind of going along the coastline here. And that could bring in quite a bit of rain here across parts of southeastern Texas and Louisiana. But right now, these two here are not names to invest, so we do not have access to the hurricane models as of right now. But I'm sure when this system here gets to the southwestern Gulf and they get names invest 93L or 94L. Actually, I think it's good. I think it's either 92 or 93, I should say. Because we got the system here as well, which is probably get names to invest later today. But really, the only thing we got here is Hurricane Larry. And as you can see here, it's a pretty big system as of right now. It's going to start to become a little bit more of a frontal low instead of a tropical low. Especially when it gets to the foundland of Canada. Here's the tracks here. You see here, it does bring it right through the parts of the southeastern part of Newfoundland of Canada. And you do see here, as they kind of move on into parts... Just southeast of Greenland which may affect Iceland very soon. Some will show it to be kind of stationary when it kind of gets in between Iceland and Greenland. But that could bring in a lot of snow for parts of southern Greenland. So it's going to be a very interesting system to watch over the next several days here. But we're not expecting any re-strengthening out of the system here. However, the pressure will likely stay pretty low on this system as well, despite if heavy the winds calming down. So... Yeah, on that. And then again, we do not have any invests here. So, at least as of right now, it may change later today, maybe after this video. But let's talk about this disturbance in the southwestern Gulf, or that will be going into the southwestern Gulf. So, your system will be like somewhere right in here at this point. And you'll start to see a system pop up in the southwestern Gulf. Now, right now, the southwestern Gulf is pretty warm. It has recovered after grace. And I'm sure that ocean heat content's the same way. So we still have the uh, the ocean heat content in those warm sea surface temperatures. And then as you move it to Sunday evening, here's your tropical low right here. You'll start to see it's kind of going along the east coast. It will kind of start to disappear here. Now, the GFS is not really impressed with the uh, development on this disturbance here. But the European model shows a little better idea. You can see there, now it's gone at that point. But I'm pretty sure its remains do go at least up along the east coast or the southeast coast of Texas, which could bring a lot of rainfall across these regions here as well. But this is wind shear, by the way. Now, early on, there's not going to be a whole lot of wind shear to work with. So it does have a window or has the opportunity to strengthen as well. And really, probably when it gets up to Texas, it will hit with some wind shear. It may start to die down at that point. Now, there, here's, there is an issue right here. Is the fact here 
is that there's not really a place for this thing to go here. I believe there's going to be a ridge of high pressure somewhere up here. And um, there's not really a place for this thing to go. However, you do see here up to the north here, there is a cold front moving in to the southeast here. And hopefully it could come in earlier because if it's going to trade slower with the cold front, that means it will stick around these areas here for a longer period of time. And you could be talking about a lot of rainfall out of the system here, which would be the worst case scenario. We won't say it won't be like Hurricane Harvey like we had a few years ago, but this will look to be a much weaker system than Harvey. So, But there could be a little similar scenario where we have a system that stays kind of stationary for a couple of days and some of that heavy rainfall kind of goes over some of the same areas. But then again, I'm not saying there's going to be a repeat of Hurricane Harvey with this system here. If you check out the total perceivable water here, and you do see here, early on here there will be some dry air across parts of the northwestern Gulf of Mexico there. But wherever the system here does enter the uh, southwestern Gulf here, some of its moisture here does push all that dry air back up north. And you do see here how it remains. Looks like it kind of makes landfall into far southeastern Texas there. And if that's the case there, you may be talking about a weaker system. And bam. It's gone here, but some of its remains here of showers and thunderstorms may stick around with that low as well. But then again, some of the watch here and some of that moisture there may get moved up to this cold front up here. So some of its remains may move to the northeast when this cold front moves a little bit closer. Let's check out the European Mall's preference here. So we'll move on to 5 o'clock on Saturday. You'll start to see this system here be somewhere in the South Forts of Gulf right in here. This time here has an opportunity to strengthen. If you move on to 6 o'clock Sunday, here's your tropical system right here. Not a very organized system here. Be do see here with sustained winds here. This is pretty much a tropical depression here with sustained winds of 30 miles per hour. And this will continue to slowly strengthen it here as it moves closer to Texas here. And then at this point here, it's getting pretty close to a tropical storm here. So European model does indicate that this will become a tropical depression here over the next couple of days. But if we check out how much rain or shower thunderstorm activity will be, looks like most of your activity will be on the eastern side of this here. And it's really good to depend on where this is going to be stationary. And you do see here, over the next couple of days, it kind of sticks around the same area here. You also do notice here, it actually breaks it in further inland here with the remains of the tropical system. However, there's a lot of shower thunderstorm activity on the eastern side of the system here. And areas on the eastern side may get to see the opportunity for a lot of rain. Meanwhile, just to the north here, here comes your cold front out here and that may try to stack all to the system here and that might move up to the northeast unless if it's get unless if it gets cut off with a high pressure system it may move a little bit more to the east here which it does show something like that and you do see here that continues to move on to the east here and that can bring in some localized heavy rainfall and maybe some flooding as well Let's check out those rainfall totals here. And you do see here, a lot of rain is looking to be coming out of the system here. It's actually got some places up to 10 inches of rain. And that's a lot of rain, folks. Even 5 plus inches of rain, you guys can still see some flooding issues out of the system here. I mean, you're talking about a widespread 5 to 9 inches of rain out there. Across southeastern Texas and a good chunk of Louisiana as well. If you look into the GFS model here, it actually has it further to the south with most of the rainfall. But you see it kind of going along the coastline here. It's like four to five inches of rain with some places could be four to six inches of rain as well. So I would definitely have to watch here areas. Probably the areas here I've circled here red will probably be the areas to monitor for now. Now a lot of things have changed from now till then. And there is some disagreements here with the medium range guidance here as of right now. We'll check out the icon off for the next five days here, which does not go throughout the entire event. 
but did a show here, maybe a similar scenario like the European ball show. So this is definitely something we're going to watch here over the next several days. And lastly, check out the GFS Ensembles. So this is the next 10 days, and it does show most of that rainfall. Probably a little bit more focus across parts of the southeast of Texas area in southern Louisiana, where there is a mean of three to five inches of rain. So if anybody lives in southeast of Texas and southern Louisiana, definitely pay attention to the system here very closely here. I don't think it's going to be a too big of a deal with the tornado threat and the um, winds. For right now, I think the main thing we need to pay attention to is the heavy rainfall from the system here. But then again, a lot of things could change from now till then. We'll probably have a better idea as we get closer to the event. But anyways, guys, this is RV Guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you're new, like my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell notifications so you never miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, hit the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.